the average first offense is a 0.14 to 0.15. That would be an average of 8 to 10 cocktails. According to the National Bureau of Justice Statistics report, 52% of persons arrested for drunk driving had consumed only beer. 23% hard alcohol. 21% mix the two. Persons drunk on wine, less than 1%. Now, do we believe that any of you would allow somebody to come into your establishment and drink 8 to 10 cocktails? No. But what they're going to do is they're going to start at home. They're going to be on their boat. They're going to be going from place to place to place to place. They're going to have a flask in their pocket, a bottle in their car. Don't kid yourselves any. But the bottom line is this. There's going to come that point in time when they begin to show signs of intoxication. And that's when we have to step to the plate and say, okay, you know more drinky, you know drivey, we call you cabby, you go home and go sleepy. One, it's ethical. We are some of the first lines of defense to stop somebody from having too much alcohol, getting behind the wheel of their automobile, and driving down the road. When you're driving down the freeway, how fast y'all going? 65, 75 miles an hour? The automobile right next to you in the freeway, how close is that? One, two feet away? When you're going up a two-lane highway, how close does that car go by you going the other way? We could all high-five each other. So basically, we're a foot to a couple feet away from either serious injury or instant death at any given point in time during the day. Now, let's put a BAC of 0.14 to 0.15 in that individual driving that automobile next to you or coming right towards you. One of the first things that will go on someone when they get intoxicated is their peripheral vision. That's why people will weave back and forth. I was reading a report on what DUI cops look for. Did you know that if a DUI cop sees you driving with your head out the window, there's a 60% chance that you are legally intoxicated? Now, hypothetically speaking, the person next to you has got a BAC of 0.14 to 0.15. They drift on the top side of your car at 65, 75 miles an hour. What's going to happen? Yeah, it's going to be the old spin cycle. You're going up a two-lane highway. Same scenario. Problem is, they hit you head on. This will probably explain why 20% of traffic fatalities in Michigan are caused by impaired drivers. That doesn't even take into account the numerous people who are injured each year by drunk drivers. What does that mean to you as a taxpayer? Each one of those deaths will cost us taxpayers $3.4 million, each injury $99,000. According to a leading insurance company, alcohol-impaired drivers are estimated to cost taxpayers $21 to $24 billion a year. This is a problem in society. The cold hearted reality is this. No one is immune from drunk driving. Studies show that 30% of the population could be hit by a drunk driver. 80% of drunk driving accidents happen between the hours of 10 p.m. and 3 a.m. What hours are you on the road? When 50% of all old WIs are issued from people drinking in restaurants and bars, and 28% of the traffic fatalities in Michigan are alcohol-related, that tells me 14% of those deaths came from people drinking in restaurants and bars. I honestly do believe this. I believe that if every server in Michigan took it upon themselves to make a difference, it may be one guest at a time, it may be one drink at a time, but I really do believe that we can cut into those numbers. We can cut into the deaths and injuries by offering alternatives to driving to an intoxicated customers. Arrange for a taxi if the customer is driving themselves. Ask a sober friend to drive the person home. Offer the customer something to eat or non-alcoholic beverages to drink. If the person insists upon driving, call the police with a description of the vehicle and license plate number if the person leaves before the police arrive. Never physically detain a customer. Every 51 minutes, somebody dies from a drunk driving accident. Before you're done with this seminar today, between two and three people have lost their lives to drunk driving accidents. Just putting it all into perspective. This concludes Module 2. Let's do a little recap. In this module, you learned about alcohol in the hospitality industry, the problems arising from alcohol consumption, and the effects of such. You should now be familiar with alcohol in the hospitality industry, problems associated with alcohol consumption, the impact of alcohol in society, the implied consent law, OWI, OWVI, and how you as a server can directly impact drunk driving. You may now take the Module 2 quiz.